My name's Pam Smart and back in 1988 I adopted a little terrier who I called JT and I used to leave him next door with my parents in their flat. They noticed that he seemed to know when I was coming home. This happened whether it was in the morning or in the evening. It didn't seem to matter when I came home or how I came home. He always seemed to know. In early 1994 a friend gave me an article from uh, the Sunday Telegraph uh, wanting people to get in touch if they appeared to have dogs that knew when their owners were coming home. So I replied to the article and got in touch with Dr Rupert Sheldrake and then he contacted me and um, we started to do experiments with JT because of course I didn't believe that JT did this but um, clearly he did. So we did about a hundred detailed experiments um, on JT's behaviour and we had to rule out routine so we came home at different times um, and sometimes I didn't know when I would be coming home so there would be completely random times and sometimes um, I came home in a taxi because we wondered whether he could hear my car or I would come home in a friend's car or even on foot. These experiments ruled out all the obvious explanations of JT waiting for me by the window at the time that I used to come home. It couldn't have been the routine, it couldn't have been hearing. So Rupert Sheldrake believed that um, because we'd ruled all these things out that we were left then with JT picking up my thoughts and using some form of telepathy. In November 1994 the science unit of the Austrian State Television got in touch, ORF, uh, and they wanted to do their own experiment with JT. So they came across uh, from Austria with uh, two cameras which they synchronise on their time codes to milliseconds. One camera stayed with JT and my parents in their flat and the other camera took me off in and around Ramsbottom. Uh, and they'd film me intermittently during the day and we were out for a, nearly four hours and then I was sat down on one of the benches in Ramsbottom and I was asked um, right Pam so do you think of JT now we are going home this is a time that we choose and at that point um, they, what you see on television is they split the screen and JT was asleep at my parents at my mum's feet and at this very second, well, five seconds into me being told that Pam, we're going home, JT gets up and walks across and takes a position up by the window where he waits for me. When the Austrian footage was shown on British television, the sceptic Richard Wiseman said it could be explained by hearing or routine um, and not telepathy. So. Rupert Sheldrake and I invited him to come and do his own experiments with JT. Richard Wiseman came to Ramsbottom and did four experiments. He did three experiments at my mum and dad's and one at my sister's and he got exactly the same results that we've been getting with JT. The data shows in the Wiseman experiments that during the main period of my absence JT went to the window 4% of the time when I wasn't coming home and 78% of the time he was at the window when I was coming home, which replicated the experiments me and Rupert Sheldrake had been getting. In 1997, on British television, there was a programme called Secrets of the Psychics, where the sceptics tried to debunk anything paranormal. And Richard Wiseman showed the JT footage, claiming that it was all coincidence and that the there wasn't anything telepathic. JT is apparently an amazingly telepathic dog. JT the dog's telepathic talent was shown on the paranormal world of Paul McKenna in what was billed as a genuine experiment. Psychologist Richard Wiseman, one of the guests on the show, found himself wondering whether the story served up to the viewers was as remarkable as it seemed. So he set up his own experiment. We filmed him continuously over a three-hour period and at one point we had the owner randomly think about returning home from the remote location. And yes indeed, JT was at the window at that point. What our videotape showed though was that JT was visiting the window about once every ten minutes. And so under those conditions it's not surprising he was there when his owner was thinking of returning home. These clips that Wiseman showed 
make it look as though JT was continually going to the window. And if we look at this one, we can see that JT is just reacting to some dogs walking past outside. And in these clips, which he was trying to use as a way of debunking, I am actually coming home and that's JT reacting to me coming home. I was astonished and appalled to read headlines and stories in the British press with Richard Wiseman claiming to disprove JT's abilities. The Times. Psychic dog is no more than a chancer. Daily Mail. How JT's homing instinct came unstuck. The Independent. Pets have no sixth sense, say scientists. The Daily Telegraph. Psychic pets are exposed as a myth. Pam Smart and I conducted two series of experiments with JT. The first of a hundred tests was not filmed and the second series was filmed on videotape. The videotaped experiments showed very clearly the time course of his behaviour. When Pam was not coming home, he very rarely went to the window. When she was coming home, he was there most of the time. Averages from 30 different experiments are shown in these graphs. The last 10 minutes of the graph is the first 10 minutes of her homeward journey. It's shown with a filled circle. And uh, in every case, he's at the window most when she's on the way home. Sometimes he went to visit the window for reasons nothing to do with Pam coming home, like barking at passing cats or dogs. Uh, but we've shown all those instances in these graphs. Richard Wiseman's experiment showed essentially the same pattern as can be seen from these graphs. I pointed this out to him when we met in September 1996. Uh, but he paid no attention to what I said and never mentioned uh, my own research. A hundred videotape trials compared with four that he did at Pam and my invitation. The reason he was so keen to debunk this claim is that he's a committed skeptic. He believes that psychic phenomena are impossible. And because they're impossible, then people who make these claims must be either foolish or fraudulent. And there must be some flaw in the experiment. In 2012, Richard Wiseman published a book called Paranormality where he continues with the JT experiments and trying to debunk them, despite Rupert Sheldrake and I pointing out that his claims are completely untrue. And if there's one thing I've learnt, it's to be sceptical of the sceptics.